Hello everyone and welcome to the river. This is Matt from In Defense of Plants and today, if you can't tell, we're going to be talking about floodplains. Now rivers are a force to be reckoned with and floods can cause billions of dollars worth of damage each and every year. However, in more natural settings, floods serve a really important ecological purpose. And the species that have adapted to these types of conditions have done so in very interesting ways. And hopefully today we're going to see some of those. So come on, let's go see what we can find. The unpredictable nature of the floodplain ecosystem is a challenge for any living organism. And that's especially true for plants because they can't get up and move away when the flood levels start to rise. Now, trees like the silver maple to my right here have adapted a live fast and die hard strategy. They grow really quickly because it gets all of their sensitive tissues up and away from where the damage is being done. But nonetheless, they can still be torn apart by a flood, especially if there's ice scour involved. Now, being torn apart sounds really bad for a living organism, but for trees like this, it's also a form of reproduction. Now, follow me and we'll see what I'm talking about. And believe it or not, this is what I'm talking about right here. Though this may seem like a dead stick, this can actually serve as a form of reproduction for trees like the silver maple or even sycamores and willows. If there's enough living tissue under this bark, undifferentiated cells can start to develop into roots. And if this ends up settling in the right conditions, you know, a little bit of mud, this will grow into a clone of the parent tree. All of that destruction can lead to an increase of individuals given the right conditions. But that's not the only service that floods provide. Floods do a lot more than just deposit debris all over the landscape. They also deposit large amounts of sediment, like all of this silt and mud we see here. And with that are tons of nutrients, especially stuff like nitrogen and phosphorus that plants desperately need to grow and reproduce. And so essentially what ends up happening is that floods recharge the system. Each year when a river rises, falls, it's depositing more and more nutrients that will fuel that year's growth. So without floods, a lot of areas are being starved of nutrient recharge that they would otherwise have. So aside from just vegetative reproduction, floodwaters can also move seeds, and they can move a lot of them as well. And if you think about it, a lot of seeds get caught at high water level in various debris around the landscape. And then when floodwaters recede and maybe a rain knocks them down or dislodges them, they find a new place to germinate. And in nutrient-rich mud as well. A lot of species take advantage of that, not unlike the seeds of bladder nut. Good luck, little guy. <laughs> 